Today we're going to be talking about bus compression for Mixdown in Pro Tools 8. What we have in front of us is a simple session. It's a blues demo. There's a two mix of the drums, bass guitar, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, organ, and lead vocal. We also have an effects send set up for the instruments and the lead vocal, which is Renaissance Reverb. And we also have a master fader. Now in this example, we already have a compressor plugin applied to the master fader of the mix. This is a very common temptation, and a lot of us do this. I would like to suggest a different way. In Pro Tools, the inserts of a master fader are post fader. So what that means is, with this compressor applied on top of the mix, if I wanted to do a fade out of the song, and I wrote some automation to the master fader for it to do that, as the song is fading out, the compressor is gonna to wanna to turn it back up because it's after the fader in the signal chain. This is feeding the compressor. The compressor sees the signal going down and it compensates for it. One way to get around this is by creating a submaster via a stereo aux track. So I'm going to make a new track, and let's label it Sub for Submaster. Now I'm going to take everything in the mix that was assigned to the main outputs, in this case A1 and 2, and I'm going to assign them to the next available bus. We could use bus 3 and 4, 7 and 8, 11 and 12, it doesn't really matter. Next, I'm going to assign the input of the new submaster to the same bus. Now, all these tracks are going out bus 11 and 12. That signal is being routed into this stereo aux track, which is then going out the same outputs as the stereo master fader. Let's play it back and see what we got. All right, so simple blues thing, no automation has been written. There's a good bit of headroom at the end of the mix. Now would be a good time to add some stereo bus compression. Now in doing this, there's a lot of different reasons to do this. Sometimes you have a mix that a client hasn't heard yet, uh, you wanna make it a little bit louder, or you want it to stand up in a car a little bit better against another CD, a commercial CD release, or play it back in a boom box, et cetera. None of which is a bad reason. Now in terms of workflow, I would suggest adding the bus compression earlier on in the mixing process. This way, it can become part of the mix and not an afterthought. Also, it's preferable to do this before writing any of your automation moves. If you spend a lot of time uh, automating a vocal track or turning up some guitar solos, a compressor by nature is going to change all that. It could really bury a vocal in a mix. It could bring out the bass guitar or a lot of the low end more so in a mix. Um, it could bring the vocal out. It really depends on the source material you're working with. Now in this example, this is a good time to add the bus compression because individual sounds have already been dialed in and we can use the automation and the compression together to polish off the mix instead of adding it after the fact and maybe ungluing it. So I've added T-Rex 3 on the Submaster. This is what we're going to be using for our bus compression. And one of the things I like about T-Rex 3 
is the presets and the name of the presets are very useful. And in this case, the preset full vintage setup is appropriate for a blue sawn like the one we're working with. And it's going to pull up the Poltec EQ and the Fairchild 670. It also pulls up the T-Rex soft clipper. This is one of the classic T-Rex modules that'll keep the mix from going into the red. So now that I've added all these modules to the mix, uh, let's hear what they sound like. So in this case, it did pretty good. The EQ is bringing up the low end. In this case, it's raising 60 hertz by a couple dB. It's also raising a couple dB at 12K. So the low end of the mix where the kick and bass are and the top end of the mix where the air is are both being brought up a little bit. The Fairchild is just a cool sounding compressor. It really does add some punch and bring everything in the mix forward without sounding thin or harsh. These two plugins really can be a great combination on a song like this. So at this point, we've dialed in some sounds, we've added the bus compression, we've played with the levels, perhaps we played with some automation, and we've gotten everything right where we want it. Now it's time to mix it down and burn a CD. This feature, as we all know in Pro Tools, is called Bounce to Disc. But before we do that, we still need to apply dither to the master fader, which will enable us to go from a higher bit depth to a lower one without affecting the sound quality. This session was recorded at 24-bit 48K. So, to get back down to 16-bit, we're going to apply dither by adding the dither plugin to the master fader. Here is the dither plugin that comes with Pro Tools, the Digirack dither. And we also have the Waves IDR dither, which does sound a little bit better. So, to review, everything is bussed to the Submaster Auxiliary track, which has T-Rex 3 applied to the last insert, which, as we'll recall, on an auxiliary track, the inserts are pre-fader. Now the signal travels through the master fader and the dither plug-in, which will help us go from 24 to 16-bit. Now, the last thing to do is to mark our boundaries which tells Pro Tools what part of the session we want to bounce. Cool, so that's the length of the song. Now we just go File and Bounce to Disk. So we're gonna want 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz stereo wave, which is CD Redbook Audio. This is not only good for burning a CD, but for ripping an MP3 or most any audio application. Now we just set the destination, type in the name of the song, and away we go. So that's using bus compression in Pro Tools 8. I'm Mark Hornsby for Pro Media Training.